She uh, she jumped right off the get-go. I think they're hooked up. I think they're hooked up. It, it sounded like firecrackers going off, just peeling off, peeling off, peeling off. There's something different about this one. Hey, Randy. Yes, sir. Go ahead. We're still trying to get this thing in the boat. At this point, there's just not much else we can try and pull with. So We came off of a win and hatter, so we were pretty... We were pretty we had a good head of steam going on into it and we kind of knew what was working and we just had really good fishing. So we had a number of opportunities to capitalize on fish. So again, we really, really felt dialed in with what we were doing. We started off and killed a fish the first day and it was, it was truly, it, that was a dream come true. Being able to bring that fish back home for my, my family and my friends and my boss and my captain, it was, it was it's what we do it for. It was pretty cool to be on the leaderboard for 15 minutes and then we got bumped off, but that was okay, you know, back to the drawing board and went and caught another one the next day. I was the only angler on the boat that day. Uh, my brother had to leave to go back to work. So unfortunately, uh, the day of the big catch, as we're riding in, obviously I was kind of bummed out because I knew I had to jump on a plane to head back for a work commitment. It was just uh, Todd, me and Ryan, and we got our buddy Royal to come with us. And uh, he did an awesome job with us as well. And the last day, I mean, there's not much to say about it. It was truly incredible. She uh, she jumped right off the get-go, and actually, I didn't see the jump. Uh, Ryan saw the jump. Uh, I was actually holding the holding the rod, putting it in the chair for Todd, looking looking at the front of the boat. I was looking the wrong direction, but uh, Moon Pie was holding the 130 like this, looking over his shoulder, waiting for Todd to get in the chair, and the fish kind of. You know, if this was the water, it kind of got like this. It couldn't get its whole body out of the water. It was just so big. And I said, boys, that's a grande blue marlin. And that was all we saw. So I jump up out of the bean bag, you know, pop my tennis shoes on, hit the button for the door. And the minute I heard that reel, I was like, oh boy, you know, we, we got a fish here. Never saw the fish, never nothing. But hearing that reel make that noise, I mean, you know, we had caught the 464 on Monday and never made that noise. I mean, we've caught plenty of big fish. We've never heard that, that reel make that noise before. You know, when the monster was called or monster was caught, you know, I'm getting phone calls in the morning on, on, my, on my cell phone saying, I think they're hooked up, I think they're hooked up. And then we started backing the boat up real hard and challenged the fish hard. We ended up getting almost to the release, on, or almost the leader on the fish the first time. And then just as soon as we got, you know, as fast as we got the line back, it went away 10 times faster and went almost at the bottom of the spool. Uh, and then Todd, you know, six inches at a time, cranked that thing back up from the bottom of the ocean. You know, Ryan starts backing down, I start cranking get it back to the mono, everybody's all happy now. Fish takes off again, gets us down probably the same amount of backer bef as before. We get like probably three quarters of the backer back and it's a stalemate for like the next probably 90 minutes. You know, she takes some, we take some. We tried going up sea, down sea, you know, Ryan was doing everything possible trying to bring her up and she wasn't coming. You know, I was at work at the time, and, and this was all coming in, and my phone was blowing up. Todd, uh, my brother, who was obviously the one that caught the big fish, was talking to me, and I just told him, hey man, just buckle down, you guys can do it, we're proud of you, and you know, do what you gotta do, make it happen. Then I started applying a bunch of pressure on Todd in the chair, calling him names, uh, yelling at him, just basically telling him he was gonna lose the fish if he didn't do more effort. <laughs> He was doing a whole lot of effort, but you know, again, you just, you, you don't, after so long, you just, you, you can't seem to understand that this is what I have on the other end of this line. So it's like, you know, you get past an hour in a fight and you really start entering that threshold of losing the fish. Between Moon Pie and Royal, I, I was spent. I mean, at fi probably five hours, I was like, all right. Between the sun just beating down on me, you know, the, the bucket harness just, she, she was pulling that harness so hard, I felt like my hips were just gonna snap. So the fish came up and, I mean, you know, the fish was still alive, it was kinda, it was right side up, but it was kinda slowly paddling over on the left-hand side, the left corner of the back of the boat. 
I put the boat, I mean, all it had going backwards as fast as it would go. And I mean, you know, we get, you know, Todd's cranking the reel and Moonpie's grabbing the leader and the leader's going through his hands so fast because this, we're, you know, after five and a half hours, like this is the first opportunity that we've had to try and gaff this fish. And we get up next to that thing and I guess Royal, Royal put the first gaff in it. I mean, it was, it's ours. Like, you know, it's, it's the, it's the ultimate high. It's, 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 it's there's nothing that I've ever felt in my whole life that's like, more gratifying than that exact moment. And then it was abruptly followed by the ultimate low. I mean, you're touching $800,000 and you can't get it in your boat. You know what I mean? I mean, you're physically touching it and you can't get it in your boat. It's like, you know, we all know what happens if you drop something that's heavy in the water, it goes away forever. Somehow or another, I get out of the chair and I walk over to the side and I'm like, yeah, boys, that's a dinosaur. We're never gonna see one of those in our lifetime again. And now all of a sudden we're all sitting there like, you know, all right, what do we do now? We've got every piece of equipment we have on that boat trying to get in there. And I had the great idea at one point to go get the Dawn and try and lube, them up, lube her up and get her in there. And then we just had a sud party in the back of the boat for a couple minutes until we got all that out of there. But we, we literally we tried everything. Thank God for Moon Pie. I mean, his wheels were spinning so fast. I mean, he was just, I, I can remember looking in his eyes and his eyes were like, glazed over and like going different ways because he was trying to think of what we had on the boat that we could use and he fired down in the engine room and next thing i know he came up with two ratchet straps like 3500 pound ratchet straps and it's like well anything we can do to get some mechanical leverage on this let's do it so we put the 3500 pound ratchet straps on it we ran around went around the ladder and we'd ratchet with one until we couldn't ratchet it anymore and then we'd ratchet the second one until the second one would come tight and take some of the load on, of the first one. And then we would pull with the ropes while Todd would try and crank on the ratchets while three other three of us were pulling on the ropes. And I mean, we would move the fish that far at a time. You know, maybe, maybe. After three tries, we'd move the fish. And it ended up that, you know, 3,500 pound ratchet straps, you know, the big straps, I mean, we stripped the gears on them. So the teeth on the ratchet strap were, were peeling off. And you know, it came to the point where we looked at each other and we, we knew that we only had so many more cranks on that ratchet before the, the, the gear was done. The fish is still stuck in the door. So I'm standing there and I'm watching this tail in the water and it's crystal clear water. And I'm like, a, a damn shark's gonna come up and eat this thing off the back end of this boat. And you know, it's gonna be, oh, you should have seen how big this fish really was. We, we talked about Cutting, cutting the hole bigger. We tried, we tried everything there was. We tried to back down on the fish to get it in the boat. We tried, I mean, we looked like the clampets when we walked, backed in there. We had ropes going everywhere. And it, it was just, we, it, it's all we could do. It's, it's all we had. And then we had about a three hour boat ride at doing 15 to 20 knots back. And for three more hours, we still tried the whole way in. I mean, I'd go upstairs for five minutes and I'd look at it and I'd look at it and I'd come back down and I'd pull on the rope. There wasn't a person on the boat on the way that didn't cry. There wasn't a person on the boat on the way that didn't like hug each other or smile or laugh or there's just so much stuff that goes through it in in a situation like that it's through your mind and then all the people the, the outpouring of people trying to help you and just the amount of people trying to do good for people that they might not even know or if they do know that is your competition. Our friends and, and the people we work with and against were all helping us trying to get the, boat, the fish in the boat. It, it, was really, it was really cool to see everybody come together. Through the assistance of people that were in the tournament, through you know the other captains, other fishermen, I mean, the radio was blowing up, telling them, hey, try this, try that. It, it was a really, really neat experience to hear all the other fishermen, the captains and stuff getting on the radio trying to give them any words of, of you know wisdom to try to figure out how to get this monster in the boat. Came into port and Moon Pie was outside and Ty was outside. And it was a six mile an hour zone once you get in so far and I looked down at them and I said, guys, we're coming in the six mile an hour zone. And they both looked at me and said, so we kept right on going. Until we came to the turning base and it turned into the big rock landing, I, I kept the boat on plane just, you know, just out of sheer fear of hoping to get that thing to the dock. When we backed into that scale, we were all kind of like, hey, hey, but, you know, be easy on her, don't, you know, be real, real gentle with her. The biggest fear was, from my standpoint, was, you know, we, we get the fish hooked up to the scale rope and they start, you know, running it up the scale and it rip apart. 
the fish the fish looked a whole lot rougher than it was. I mean, you know, I'll be the first person to say that that fish hung by its tail and, you know, by its own weight and by its tail. So, you know, the, the fish had exhaust rash on the one side from where our exhaust pipe would run underneath of it. And other than that, you know, it was the fact that the Big Rock Landing, we just couldn't get the fish all the way off the ground to get it straight up and down. There's no doubt in my mind that that fish would have hung by its tail with, even without having to have the bill tied to the tail to get its weight. I don't think you could have put another person at the Big Rock Landing when we pulled in there. There was a huge crowd there. I mean, people on boats, people on, on land. I mean, just all the restaurants on the way to the, to, the, to, the, to the scales were just lined with people. You can't even compare the, the crowd from Monday to the Saturday fish. It was just, it was crazy. I mean, even just the noise. Winning, winning the Big Rock for me is the world. It, it's, it's the Super Bowl. I guess the first thing that went through my mind was, I mean, and, and this calmly, was you just won the Big Rock. It's about time.